Good evening. I'm Madeline Peel, and I'm the moderator of Community Board 8 Speaks. This evening, we have one of the more exciting topics that we've ever had at a community board meeting, and it's about emergency preparedness. And it's through one of uh, our committees, which is the Housing Committee uh, at the Community Board, and we're going to be able to talk to some people and get questions answered uh, from people from the Red Cross, from people from the Office of Emergency Management, and also different elected officials are going to talk to us about how important this is. This is a really important subject. It's very easy to get prepared. You just have to make note of it in your mind. And we'll talk to some people throughout the program, and you'll get a much better understanding of what this means and how easy it is to do. Uh, and not the least of it is at the very end of the program, people get a chance to win a go bag, something that all of you should have at home. It's one of the most important things that you can have either at the office or at home, and it's got all of the important things that you need to be on the go in case of an emergency. I'm here yes. this evening with Dan Brodnick, yes. who is our council member, uh, who represents not only Community Board 8, which this show is about, of course, but also the Community Board 6. That's correct. Uh, which is and five. And too. five. A little bit of five. A little bit of five. So he's got, he's got three community boards. We're very pleased that he could be here today because we have a, uh, always in Manhattan, since we're Island, we have the issue of emergency preparedness. And some people forget that we're an island, but we are. And um, you've got some great ideas, some great staffing ideas for what to do in emergencies. Absolutely. Well, one of the reasons why we wanted to be here tonight is to show our support for planning uh, locally, to think about what we need to do in our own homes when it comes to emergencies that we may not actually be thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's OK. We don't want to really be thinking about emergencies every day, but we do need to be ready we for emergencies ready. every day. Right. The go bag was something more interesting. Yeah, we should absolutely. Go take well, a look should we at take a look yeah. at the go bag? Because I'm going to encourage everybody to have oh, red yeah. over here. That's uh, no. Always oh, looking for recruits for these six minutes. So we've got this is a sample go bag over here, which yes. you see has a number of different items in it. And the American Red Cross uh, can give you a list, and you can go to their website, or you can get some of their booklets, and you can find out all the kind of things. Should we take a look at what we have here? Yeah. Well, a flashlight. Well, we've got a flashlight. That seems like a, a basic and very important one to have it, but we just can't have a flashlight, right? You have to have some, some extra <laughs> batteries. Right, Absolutely. very good. Absolutely, and then you've got the drinking water. Oh, drinking water, which, you now drinking water is over here. Drinking water's over there. So those are just small, smaller packets of drinking water, yeah. right? Yeah, and I think that you need to keep about two quarts per person at home. Uh, in the closet, just in case. And this is just specifically for the go bag, right? So you would you would recommend having much more water at home, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then you've got an emergency poncho in case the weather is really bad. No, that's, so that, that's a good one Because, too. You, you know, you don't necessarily have a change of clothes in there. No. So this will keep you dry. Transistor radio. But solar. Solar. Yeah. Radio. So that way you don't use up your batteries for flashlights. Makes great sense. So that makes sense. And now, for just, just so people know, how much does something like this uh, cost, roughly? The radio itself is probably $30 or $40. But I think the whole go back is a good deal. The whole go back is about $70. I'm very fortunate to be able to introduce to the people who are watching this show Manhattan Borough President Scott Springer. And Scott, is a brand new borough president, but not new in this initiative because emergency preparedness is one of the mainstays of your agenda. And community is so important to you, Scott, and bringing people out here to this meeting is something that we're very grateful to you for. Well, thank you. This is a great event uh, to happen on the east side. It's needed. People have to know how to respond to emergencies, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a blackout or a rainstorm or, God forbid, a terrorist attack. These are the times we live in and we have to know what to do, how to react. Uh, knowledge is power in the situation, and knowledge saves lives. And the work that the community board is doing by getting out to people and saying, come out for an hour, learn what you can do collectively as a neighborhood right. to help protect our community is something that is happening all over the city. We need people like community boards to just say, look, we're going to prepare people, we're going to get them interested, and we're going to get them out to have an honest discussion about what people's fears are. Our Borough President Scott Stringer is here. We're uh, phenomenally glad that he could join us. His uh, schedule is uh, nothing short than, than hectic. And thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us and open up our program on emergency preparedness. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
I want to start off by thanking you because you put so much work into this as the local community board, and, and this really does matter. And it's really important. Um, I think the mayor and Commissioner Bruno, who I actually met with a few weeks after I became borough president, went out to Brooklyn to see what this emergency management unit was all about. Couldn't find the building. I got a little nervous. They opened up the side. It said right this way, and I went in like this. But um, but it is but it, but it is important because it's not just about terrorism. It's about uh, a host of things that can go wrong in a city of eight million people, and we have to be prepared. He convinced me during the blackout a couple of years ago, when the lights went out. I happened to be in my apartment. The lights went out. Someone from downstairs in the building said, "What's going on?" And I walked outside, and it looked like something out of a movie with people with radios running around, not knowing. Remember that blackout was not just New York, but went all the way to Ohio because some tree fell on some Ohio station, and suddenly there was a very serious blackout. And I went to my district office because we said, well, our role here is to help people. One, to calm them down. It's not a terrorist attack. Uh, also to make sure that if people need uh, flashlights and batteries, if they get stuck in elevators, we want to respond. Walked into the office and took an inventory. We had nothing. We had no water. We had no batteries. Took out money. I said to one of our folks, go and buy as many batteries you can and, and flashlights at Radio City, you know, the Radio Shack. Uh, they didn't have enough batteries or flashlights. So it showed us that if there was something of a real emergency that went beyond blackout, uh, elected officials, offices, if there were anything like mine, and mine was pretty good, we were not prepared to deal with this. And even if we had all the supplies, what did we know to do? I'll tell you what I did. I went to Fairway and Broadway, Broadway took a big radio to assure everybody that things were under control. And people looked at me and said, wow, you really have it together. And I said, yeah, rapid response. <laughs> I tell you tonight, if they had one other question, we would not have been able to respond. So there is a program and a protocol that has been developed. It is something that we have to get to people. Unfortunately, people do tend to respond only in an emergency and they rely on community leaders and activists to sort of guide them. So while you wish that 1,000 people would show up for a night to learn about this, that's not going to happen. So the people who are here tonight who really do care passionately about their neighbors, you're going to have to leave this meeting and continue the education process. And I think that if we won't participate in this, uh, any disaster that we can face, we'll be able to handle it. And remember, unlike other parts of the country, we're New Yorkers. So we're already quick, smart, we have attitudes. We're not afraid of anything. We can deal with anybody. We just need a little supplies and guidance, right? So thank you to you for doing this and for the community board. Uh, you're right, I wish I could stay and listen. But uh, one thing I have learned about being borough president for the first 100 days, every community has many meetings in every part. Chinatown is part that. There are some neighborhoods that when there aren't any meetings, they just show up to one club meeting. And I'm talking about all of them. So, uh, I'll leave you with Councilman Garanik, who you know you're in good hands with. I want to thank you for inviting me. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. I, I won't add too much more to what the borough president said, but first of all, I wanted to congratulate you on being here uh, because it is especially important for us to be thinking about these things uh, and preparing the roof when the sun is shining, as they say, and thinking about how we will be responding ourselves for our families and loved ones. Um, and so this is critically important. And we really do rely on you in many ways to be the leaders to take this message back uh, to other members of the community. This is obviously what I try to do as a local member of the city council, but also you as people who are uh, involved, civically uh, active uh, and interested to take this message back and encourage people to, to do all the things that we're going to learn to do tonight. I wanted to congratulate Community Board 8 and thank them for all of their work in, uh, in putting this together. Of course, the American Red Cross, the Office of Emergency Management for all that you do. Um, and I, I want you to know that uh, as we go forward and as we continue on a day-to-day -day basis and thinking about all of the issues that affect us locally, whether they are thoughts of emergencies or thoughts of of ways that you think that we can make our lives safer on a daily basis. I hope you will um, feel free and I encourage you to reach out to my office and have that be a, a two-way conversation uh, because I don't presume to know all of the answers um, and I know that frequently uh, the answers, of, uh, the, the questions about what is safe, what is not safe on a local level are 
uh, are raised by individuals who are living on a particular block, on a particular street corner, uh, on any given day. So I'm glad you're all here to prepare for, um, uh, for, for how, how to respond in an event of an emergency. Thank you for having me, and uh, I look forward to hearing uh, some of the presentations. So thank you very much. Again, I want to uh, follow up on uh, Scott Stringer's remarks by saying that we always want to make sure that we have a packed house here, but who is here are the people who are committed to bring this, this message of emergency preparedness back to the community. So with that, I want to um, introduce to you again Inez Santana with the American Red Cross. We are so happy for them because they were able to give us the safety tools that, that each of you have. And then at the end, she's going to remind you that uh, we do have two go bags that are being raffled off. You have to complete evaluations. Hey, if you don't do that, you won't be able to get to the raffle or the go bag. Also, we have uh, Benjamin Whitfield from the Office of Emergency Management. They do these uh, presentations in tandem with each other. We are really thrilled that they work together uh, by, by doing these types of programs. You'll be able to also know uh, some of the services that the Red Cross is offering, as well as the uh, Office of Emergency Management. So with that, I want to uh, give you <laughs> Okay, take it away. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Do I need a microphone? No. No. no? no. All right. Excellent. I uh, just want to thank all you guys for having us come out tonight. Um, I want to thank uh, Borough President uh, Stringer, City Council Member, City Council Member Karatsky. Karatsky. Uh, excuse me. Close enough. Karatsky. Um, just Nico, say Dan. Nico Dan. Oh, for being himself. And everyone from Community Board 8. So uh, thank you very, very much for having us out here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. If you guys have questions, um, you can hold them until the end of the presentation. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. Know the hazards. This is me as well. So know the hazards. Um, we've been telling you guys different tools you can have. How to have a communications plan. How to have a, a go bag, emergency supply kit. What are we preparing for? Um, here's a list of some of the hazards we face in New York City. Um, weather, fire, building collapses and explosions, utility disruptions, hazardous materials, radiation, disease outbreaks, and last and least of all, terrorism. You'll notice the very first slide we have on here is weather. Weather affects us every single day. Um, at the emergency Office of Emergency Management, where I work, we have a 24-7 operation called Watch Command, uh, which is where we just monitor the whole city. We monitor the police frequencies, the fire frequencies, the EMS frequencies. You know the main thing is that we monitor every day so closely that I get 1,000 pages about a day? It's the weather. Uh, the weather affects us so dramatically. If we have a large warm spell coming in, uh, that can really wreak havoc on a lot of us. That shoots the, uh, the power up which increases the opportunity of having blackouts. We have a lot of cold weather. You have a lot of cold weather, you have a lot of people, you know, bring their heaters inside, uh, so you have a lot more fires going on. Weather affects us every day, not to mention coastal storms, nor'easters, blizzards, and the like. So weather is the biggest influence. Um, terrorism is last for a specific reason. Uh, and we're gonna go through this presentation, telling you guys the hazards. But if you're prepared for fires, if you're prepared for building collapses, if you're prepared for hazardous materials, you're going to be prepared for a terrorist attack. So that's going to be last on our list. That's the least thing we need to worry about. The biggest thing is weather. Weather. So weather, as I said, uh, affects us so greatly every day. Um, we are constantly monitoring the weather here uh, in New York City. Uh, we are actually, if you guys don't know it, we're very, very susceptible to coastal storms. Um, as we've all seen what happened in the Gulf last year, two years ago, we had tons and tons of hurricanes. Um, New York City is very susceptible to, to coastal storms. Uh, actually, if you look at the major cities in the United States, we're number three, right behind Tampa and New Orleans. Uh, the city has a very strong and probably the most robust coastal storm plan in the country, if I don't mind saying so myself. Uh, and what we have is this is a, a picture of eMALS. eMALS is a, uh, it's a program we have on the internet. You guys can go to nyc.gov, the website listed right there. It's also in your guide. 
you guys can go to this website and you can type in your address. And it'll tell you if you live in a flood zone for a coastal storm. And if so, what storm would adversely affect you, whether it be a Category 1, 2, or 3, uh, or 4. We don't get Category 5s in New York City. Uh, that is one fact we do know. The weather up here, the, the waters will not sustain. They don't get warm enough to sustain a hurricane that large. So the worst we could ever have would be a Category 4 hurricane. Um, that's bad enough. Extreme heat. Uh, heat is another big thing. I don't know if you guys recall three years ago in Europe, we had the, the heat wave that came through. 30,000 people killed. Uh, that's due to a lot of different reasons. That's the, that's the construction, the way they make up the houses there. That's the lack of, most people don't have ACs. Uh, poor infrastructure in some areas. Uh, but heat can adversely affect us. People, especially with weakened or uh, compromised immune systems, uh, they can really compromise uh, their, their health and jeopardize that. Uh, so heat is something we want you to all watch out for. Another good reason to have an emergency supply kit, um, because if you're stuck inside and the power goes out, you have at least three gallons of water to last you for a while. You have food. Uh, when everything else is going perishable, everything else is, is decomposing, and your refrigerator and everything is melting away, you have some non-perishable food. Oh, sorry, to back up. You don't have to back up. Sorry. Uh, the also, as you saw, the, the power lines there, it's a, when the weather really gets really hot, most of us do run the ACs. Can I see a show of hands? This is for my own humor. Who has an AC in here? Almost everybody? Okay. I don't have to stand here. Uh, and I burn up in July. Uh, but no, when everyone's run, so runs their AC, the, uh, <laughs> what is it? You're also young. I am young. Uh, we also, it does shoot the, uh, the energy and the power through the, through the air. Um, so we've got to really monitor that, and that's when a lot of, we do have the power breaks, the power downs, the brownouts, and all the like, because of the, the hotter weather. So we have to monitor that as well. Winter weather, winter weather is also extremely dangerous. Um, you guys think of the, the common reasons as being, you know, the going out in the snow and freezing. Tons and tons of all the ancillary uh, problems that can come with winter weather. Uh, you probably didn't know, we actually have the highest uh, carbon monoxide deaths and poisons during winter weather. Uh, people who decide to start their heater in the living room, uh, a, a kerosene generated heater, never a good idea. We don't recommend that at all. Uh, also people who uh, maybe start their car to warm up their car, it's really cold. Uh, the gas pipe, the tailpipe may have snow uh, crammed in it, and so the, the, night, the uh, carbon monoxide comes back in there. Um, and also we have a lot of fires as well, people lighting candles to stay warm, opening their ovens and turning those on. So a lot of different reasons, uh, a lot of different hazards that come with winter weather. Uh, we always advise you guys to never operate kerosene heaters inside, um, to never you know, leave a candle unattended. We also always, if you're going to warm up your car, make sure the, uh, the tailpipe is cleaned out. Fire is another huge hazard in New York City. Uh, this is a great time when you want to have your go bag. Um, give a little scenario to you guys, it's uh, actually all too common. You go to bed, it's a Wednesday night, um, you wake up at 2.30 in the morning, uh, and you smell smoke. What do you do? You get out, exactly. Uh, you grab your loved ones, you grab whatever you can, and you get out as soon as possible. Um, all too often, though, people leave their, their homes, and they don't have any kind of materials to reconstruct their life. They don't have a go bag with insurance documents. Uh, people are taking medications, and it's a very stressful situation, but they don't know what medications they're taking or what the dosage is or who the doctor is to get the prescription filled again. Um, they, they just have to start all over. So we encourage you guys to have a go bag. We encourage you guys always to have a smoke detector. Uh, check that every time you wind your clocks back. Uh, that's very important. Also be familiar with an escape plan for your apartment. Do you guys know how to use a fire escape? Do you guys hire fire escapes or fire? Uh, what are the windows on the fire escapes? The, grate, the grates, fire escape grates? Make sure you know how to use that. Make sure you know how to unlock it. There's a lock on it. Do you have a key? Do you know where the key is? Um, all those things you guys should be very aware of. Make practice your evacuation plan with your family. If you have kids, um, I actually heard a great story it's about a month ago. I was giving a presentation, somebody came up to me afterwards, um, and they heard from a, a child went to school and heard that she stopped, drop, and roll. This child came home and encouraged their family they wanted to do a, uh, uh, an evacuation of the house, you know, around the house, pretend there's a fire. And it was doing that, they realized the youngest child couldn't reach the latch under the door to get out. So if everyone left out, or if the child was there unattended in a room, the child could not even unlock the door to get out. Uh, so because of that, now they have a small stoop inside the door. The child can move over to unlock the doors if the child has to get out. Floating collapses and explosions, you think, that never happens in New York City. That happens all the time, unfortunately. Floating uh, collapses, what we say here, the, the biggest thing here, a lot of this happens with uh, 
gas main breaks, gas leakages, um, people coming home and smelling gas. Pop quiz, you come home, you smell gas, it's dying time, what do you do? Sir. Yes, go ahead. Get out. Get out. Call, call 911. Call 911, yes. Get away from the house. If you live in an apartment building, it's probably polite to knock on their doors and tell them as well. You might want to leave the building, there's, there's gas leaking. Um, you want to get out as soon as possible. Some people say, you know, figure out where it's coming from. Well, if it's nighttime and you flip on a light to figure that out, it's bad news. Um, if you ever smell gas, immediately exit the building, alert anyone you can, and call 911. Utility disruptions. We didn't think much about this before the blackout, but we, now we know what a serious issue this is. Uh, the rest, some people had a, a, a good time. Some people were able to go outside and, and just get time, getting to know their neighbors, have a barbecue. Uh, but for other people, it was a lot more serious. People who are on uh, life sustaining equipment, people who have to have electricity to keep their, uh, their respirators running. Um, so we encourage you, if you are on life sustaining equipment, that you register with Con Edison or Keyspan, uh, and that you, this is also a great time to have emergency supply kit. Has materials? Hazardous materials, most of the hazardous materials in New York City are actually under your sinks. Um, if you have children, we always encourage you guys to keep those sinks, uh, put it not under your sink, but somewhere higher up. Uh, if you have uh, any kind of hazardous materials laying around, paints, cleaners, any kind of abrasions like that, you want to keep that away from children or your pets. If you ever do have a child uh, that you fear is, or any kind of person that's ingested some poisons, call the poison hotline, 212 poisons. It's also in your guide. Uh, as materials, they do run through the city very constantly. Uh, we have a very active industrial uh, area here in this region of New York, the tri-state area. So we monitor these things. We know when they're coming through. Um, if you ever do hear from our first responders, the fire department, the police department, saying, please exit the area or please shelter in place, just adhere to uh, what the first responders are telling you and, uh, and obey that for your own sake. Radiation exposure. Uh, three most important things to remember in radiation exposure, a little tip for you, is time, distance, and shielding. Uh, with time, time, distance, and shielding. Shielding, uh, you got the southern accent, we can't understand it. Uh, it's in your guide as well. This happened to me before in the presentation. What? Time, you want to limit the time that you're exposed to the radioactive material. Um, distance, you want to put as much distance as possible between it. If something glowing, don't touch it. You want to move as far away as possible from it. And shielding, you want to put as many layers of material between you and the radioactive material as possible. Um, so go inside, close the door. If you have a mattress, put the mattress up to it. Most people don't have big uh, walls of uh, lead laying around, so uh, just put as much distance as you can. Doors, mattresses, anything of the like. Is these outbreaks? Uh, most people used to be concerned with the uh, West Nile virus. We don't really care about West Nile virus anymore. The big scare now is avian flu, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Avian flu, everyone's worried about that. Uh, I can address some more of that after the presentation's over. Avian flu, um, right now there are no cases currently in the United States. Once again, you just want to listen to first responders. Uh, if something happens, we do say shelter in place. It's not safe to go outside because of an outbreak. Uh, it's a good time to have your emergency supply kit place that you don't have to go running outside to get uh, Lipton noodles and bottled water. So you want to have your materials inside. You want to have your emergency uh, supply kit in place. Uh, but yeah, so listen to that and understand that the city is working 24-7 to, uh, to work around these things that, to address the biological impacts, outbreaks. Uh, we actually have the, uh, the SNS, Syndromatics SSS, Syndromatic Surveillance System. Uh, and what that is is our office takes all the material, all the information from all the hospitals every day. Uh, so every single hospital in the uh, New York area, New York City area, we put it all together and compile the information and we look for any kind of glitches, any kind of bumps in the information. Now, if we have a lot of people from one area that have been really sick, a lot of people in one area who have fevers, kind of lets us know we may have something. So we go and investigate it. Um, city of New York is very well prepared. You guys live in a very, very well prepared city. Um, so rest assured of that. But we also encourage you to take your own steps. So listen to first responders, have emergency supply kit, and uh, understand that we're working as, as hard as we can. Thanks for going all, um, over all the hazards. Now that you understand all the hazards, now you're ready to think about terrorism. Because once you prepare for fire explosion, you're ready to think about the larger part, uh, which is terrorism. Remember, everything, anything, everything that's going to happen during terrorism is generally results 
uh, from, an, from, from a fire to an explosion to a building collapse. All of that is what generally happens after a disaster, a terrorist, but particularly a terrorist um, attack. So now that you know how to prevent, now you know some other skills, um, now you, you can think about terrorism in an easier and more sensible way so that you don't feel so afraid about it. Because what makes it, most people think, oh my God, a terrorist attack, what's gonna happen? What am I gonna be able to do? But in reality, if you think about it, oh my God, it's an explosion. I know what to do because I read about it. I know what to do. I have a plan already. So, um, so you already have an A+. I'm here with Nika Pope, who is the chair of our housing committee for Community Board 8. And this was such an exciting evening yes, that you managed to put together. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. We had uh, Borough President yes. Scott Stringer and Council Member Dan Gorodnik. I know someone from Jessica Lappin's office was yes. here. And the public, uh, people who've been involved in CERT, people who've been involved with the Office of Emergency Management yes. and the Red Cross. The and, fire department was oh, here. They were the incredible. The Department of Aging was right, here. Right. But I have to tell you, the presentations from the Office of Emergency Management and also the Red Cross was just phenomenal. A great deal of information. Make a plan. That's how you prepare for emergency preparedness. That's the first step. It's Make not, a plan. That's right. And also, always realize where you are. Because mm -hmm. let's say you're downtown and you've got to get uptown, so you've got to have a plan for that, or your children, yes. or your age, you know, yeah. people that in your family. That was the question that came up. That was. How, how do we get children involved in the and process? And also, what about our seniors? Mm -hmm. Very important, yes. because we, we must make sure that they have their medications, mm -hmm. and what to do even with a pet. That's and a there big is, problem, too. Just about the seniors, there is a Ready New York booklet just for specifically seniors, right. and right. they're also going to come out with the Ready New York just for pets. So perfect, you know that's great. Well, if we can get people ready, mm -hmm. that's what a community board does. Okay, here we go. He's our first winner. Um, yeah, the last, I it's different, but what? Uh, Uh, you should have an emergency right now.